Hi, boys and girls, and welcome back to AAEC's Children's Ministry. I am Miss Sharice, and I am so happy to see you again and start off the month of November with our lesson entitled Special Gifts. It comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 32 through 43. So make sure you get your Bibles and come back so we can get started with this wonderful lesson. Okay, so boys and girls, we're going to be talking about special gifts that God gives us. And before we do, we want to make sure we invite God in with a word of prayer. So let us bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the wonderful world you created. It's through this world, Lord Jesus, that we can see who you are. You've revealed to us who you are in a very special, special way. Lord, we're asking that you show us today what special gifts we have that can be used by you and how we can share your word with others, Lord Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that you always guide us and you always lead us in every situation and that we continue to grow in your love and in a relationship with you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, boys and girls, there is no prayer that is too small for God. So don't forget to do your prayers at night or in the morning or even in the middle of the day. Take time to talk to God. Thank him for what he's done and ask him to help you in situations where you need him. So now let's go into our memory verse. And today our memory verse comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you received a spiritual gift. God has shown you his grace in giving you different gifts. And you are like servants who are responsible for using God's gifts. So be good servants and use your gifts to serve each other. So boys and girls, this verse is teaching us that God has given us something special and it's a gift and it is to be used to serve one another and also to glorify God. And that's what we're going to be looking in deeper with in our lesson today. So I want you now to take some time to learn how we can have fun with our memory verse and study it and just bury it deep in our heart. Here's a very cool activity. Now, who doesn't love cereal? I love cereal. I eat it every day, maybe even twice a day. But how many of you keep the cereal box? Probably most don't. So don't throw away your cereal box this time. I want you to keep it because you can use it to make a memory verse jigsaw puzzle. Ask your mom and dad if they can cut the box for you or you can use safety scissors and cut the box yourself. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the larger rectangular piece and a marker and write your memory verse on the back in nice, big, beautiful, neat letters and make sure you include the reference. In this case, it's 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Now, after you've done that, you can draw with your marker puzzle pieces, or you can just draw wavy lines, or you can just draw straight vertical lines and horizontal lines and cut along those lines. Just make sure you have puzzle pieces, okay, that you can put back together. And it could look something like this. Now, after you've done that, boys and girls, you wanna see if you can put your memory verse back together. And this is great to do if you have friends over or you just wanna have fun with your family. They can just enjoy putting the puzzle pieces of God's word back together. And it helps you memorize it because you can do it over and over. So make sure after you've cut your puzzle up and you've done it and you've worked it out, put it in a plastic bag and store it somewhere safe for the next time you'd like to use it. So doesn't that sound cool? Okay, great. So let's now go on to our lesson. So boys and girls, our memory verse talked about special gifts. And these special gifts can be used in many ways. Sometimes we don't think we're very special or we don't have something special, but God says that we do. I want you to take a look at these different jobs. Now we see a doctor, we see a lawyer, and we see a teacher. So give yourself about 30 seconds to think, are these important jobs? And if so, why would they be important to us? Okay, so have you thought about those jobs? Well, let's take the doctor. A doctor goes to school for a really long time to study the human body. And it's so that he or she can save lives. 
And it's so important that doctors are available to us because when we get sick or when our body is hurt, we need them. They'll help us. So their job is very important. Well, what about a lawyer? Is a lawyer's job important? Yes, lawyers are trained in order to defend people. If you've been accused of a crime or done something wrong, a lawyer can defend you and you can stand before a judge and a judge will determine if you're guilty or innocent. And so we hope that you're not guilty, but either way, a lawyer is sent for you to be defended. Now, what about teachers? Everybody's had a teacher. A teacher teaches you your basic fundamental skills, reading, math, science, writing, and it's all to help you learn and grow and get better. And of course, when you get a job, you have a college professor or you have some teacher that's gonna teach you your job skills. So teachers are very important. Now I want you to take a look at these jobs. Boys and girls, look closely. We have a street sweeper, we have a cafeteria worker, and we have a bus driver. So are these jobs really as important as a doctor or a lawyer? Well, I hope you said yes, because they do things in our community that really help us in unique ways, wonderful ways. The street sweeper, his job or her job is to help keep your community clean. And if we don't have a clean community, that means everything around us is unhealthy. The trash, the waste that people leave on the ground, if someone isn't there to clean it up, those things can cause us to be sick. And not only that, it's just not attractive. It doesn't make our community beautiful. And that can make us feel sad as well. Now, what about a cafeteria worker or a canteen worker? His or her job is to get up early in the morning and prepare the food you need for breakfast or lunch, or maybe even dinner when you go to school or at your job. So just remember that there's someone there to prepare healthy meals for you. So they're not insignificant. That means it's not that they are unimportant, they are special. And then we have a bus driver. Well, you may say to yourself, well, all they do is just sit down and drive all day, but their job is very, very important. If you don't have a car, you need a bus driver to take you from home to work, or from home to school, or wherever you need to go. A bus driver's job is very, very important. So you see, there is no job that is not significant or special to God. So that actually brings us to our lesson for today in Acts chapter nine. What special gifts are given or what special circumstances does God allow us to go through in order for us to be used by God and in order for God to be glorified. So let's take a close look. I want to remind you of what we learned in the previous lesson about a man named Saul. Saul wanted to persecute the Christians. He did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And he made a mission to go out there and just destroy these Christians. So one day Saul was on the road to Damascus and this is where he met Jesus. He was blinded by a bright light and Jesus called to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul said, who are you? And of course, Jesus told him who he was. And through this experience, Saul was converted. He was changed. He came to believe in Jesus because he saw him with his own eyes. And after that, what did Saul do? Saul began preaching all over Judea, started to tell people all about Jesus and how he truly is God. He truly is the Messiah. And you know what? Many people turned to the Lord and believed all because of the special circumstance that God put Saul in. So that's what we learned in our last lesson. Now this was going on at the same time that Peter was traveling. And this is our lesson for today. Peter traveled to a town called Lydda and Peter was going there to talk to different believers. He was just moving from place to place. And as you know, Peter knew Jesus and he, he lived and, and was with Jesus for three years before he died. And he even saw Jesus alive after his death. So Peter knew that it was his job to go and share the gospel with others. And that's what he was doing. And in the town of Lydda, he came to a man named Aeneas. Now, Aeneas had been paralyzed for eight years and he was bedridden. But Peter came up to him and said, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up 
and roll up your sleeping mat. And Aeneas was healed. It was so amazing. Now, you see, Aeneas might have just been sitting there thinking his life was hopeless. I'm just a paralyzed man. I mean, for eight years, you know, why, why me? Why did this happen? But God used Aeneas to show his miraculous healing power. And after Aeneas was healed, guess what happened? Many people in the town of Lydda came to believe in the Lord Jesus. They knew that through the power of Jesus, you can be healed. And this must mean he truly is God. So God used Aeneas's special circumstance that didn't look too good, but he turned it for good. Well, at the same time, in another town called Joppa was a wonderful lady by the name of Tabitha. And her name was Dorcas in Greek. And Tabitha made clothing for people. She was so keen on helping the poor and everybody just loved her. Well, one day she became very ill and she died. And this made many of her friends sad. I mean, death is such a sad, sad thing. It was very hard for them to accept it. Well, anyways, they decided to tell Peter, who they knew he was in the town of Lydda, to come to Joppa and pray for her and to help them. And that's exactly what Peter did. When he came, he saw that she had been lying in bed ill and they had already washed her body for burial and laid her in an upstairs room. So the believers were just saying to Peter, you've got to do something. You've got to do something. Well, Peter told all of them to leave the room, the crying widows, everybody. He just said, leave the room. And what Peter decided to do was take her hand and pray for her. That's exactly what he did. And then Peter said, get up, Tabitha, get up. And Tabitha opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up and Peter gave her his hand. This was a woman who was ready for burial. That means she was headed for her funeral. She had already been determined as dead. But Peter, by prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, brought her back to life by the power of God. And then what Peter did was he presented her alive to all the people in the town of Joppa. And guess what happened? The people turned to the Lord and believed that Jesus Christ was the savior and through Jesus Christ, we can be healed. It was amazing. And Peter stayed a long time in Joppa after that, obviously preaching and continuing to spread the good news of Jesus. So guess what, boys and girls? God used something so tragic like the death of this woman in order to show his miraculous healing power that through Jesus, we have life. He is the one that brings us back to life. So our circumstances may seem sad, boys and girls, but they can be special circumstances used by God to show his glory and to turn others to Jesus Christ. Okay, so now this brings us to a very, very important question. And this is a question that you probably already have thought about boys and girls, and you certainly will think about more and more as you get older. And this is the question about suffering. Why does God allow sickness? Why does God allow a person to be handicapped or disabled? Why does God allow someone, even children, to suffer? It just, it seems so unfair. We don't understand why sometimes. God, why? We just want to know. Well, God has an answer for us. And in these stories that we learned about Aeneas and we learned about Dorcas, one reason is God can heal us. But what if we pray to God and he doesn't heal us from our suffering or our disability or sickness? Does that mean that God is not powerful or loving or that he actually wants us to suffer? No, it does not. I want you to think about a woman named Johnny Erickson Tata. She has a very amazing story and she has been able to share with people all over the world about her love for God. You see, boys and girls, the reason why we suffer and the reason why we go through these things is because of sin. God said it all the way back in the Garden of Eden to Adam that when you sin, you will die. And it's just the truth. Sin leads to death. 
And today, many people suffer because of it. But what has God been able to do, even in spite of that suffering, has been absolutely amazing over the years. And Johnny Erickson Tata's story is an example of that. So let's listen closely to her story. Now, Johnny Erickson Tata is known as a quadriplegic. That means she cannot use her arms and she cannot use her legs. And so she has to live in this wheelchair pretty much for most of her life, all of her life. Let's go back to the early days of Johnny's life. Johnny was a vibrant young teenager and she wanted to do what most teens love, play sports, hang out with friends, enjoy life. Well, one day she and her sister went swimming and Johnny took a dive in shallow water and broke her neck. She was instantly paralyzed. Her young life and fun was significantly altered. This became Johnny's new life, bedridden and in a wheelchair and without the use of her hands or her legs. Now you might say, well, that's it. What is the purpose to life? Why God? I don't understand it. It's over for me. Well, let's continue to listen to Johnny's story. Johnny had a wonderful relationship with Jesus and she knew him to be the God that heals. Um, the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, he can heal you just like he did with Aeneas and with Tabitha. So Johnny prayed. Johnny said, Lord, Lord, please heal me, heal me, help me to walk again. And Johnny prayed and Johnny prayed, but for some reason, the healing never came. In fact, Johnny just had to learn to live with this, but Johnny did ask God why. And guess what? As Johnny learned to live with her disability, she got the answer from God and it surprised her. Johnny actually was getting physically, physically weak, more weak, but she was spiritually growing. She was getting closer to God. She was praying more. She was understanding who God was because now that she wasn't focusing on those physical needs, she's focusing on her spiritual needs. She grew to love the Lord. And she learned that she could do amazing things without the use of her arms and legs. So Johnny was able to learn how to write and she became a famous painter by using her mouth. That's right. I mean, that is a skill, boys and girls, that no one would think of. It's just amazing. So Johnny learned that her disability was actually not a setback. Instead, it was a way for her to grow differently. It was a way for her to grow spiritually and to learn new ways in which she could enjoy her life. And so now Johnny is celebrating 50 years in a wheelchair. That's right. She never was healed physically by God, but she was changed spiritually by God. And she learned some very important lessons that she can teach us. And Johnny has been teaching people all over the world. For over 50 years, she has been traveling the world and telling people about Jesus, his love, his kindness, and her spiritual growth with him and how they can spiritually grow with God as well. So here are some lessons that Johnny learned. Number one, God may use a special circumstance that doesn't seem so great in order to teach us that life can be about unique ways of living. It's not always the same thing. It's not always about using your hands or using your feet, but there are other things we can use. There are other ways we can live. So God was teaching her something about her experience. Number two, she learned that God taught her perseverance, how not to quit when things are tough or difficult. You see, if Johnny had been healed, she might've just been said, oh, thank you, God, and I'm gonna move on with my life and just not pay attention anymore to you know things that are difficult because every time I call on God, he's just gonna fix it. But instead, God allowed her to have that disability to learn, don't quit. Even when it's tough, you don't quit. You keep on working, you keep on going. The third lesson that Johnny learned was that she has compassion for others with this same disability. So now that she has it, when she sees somebody else, she has love for them. She's concerned about them. She has empathy for them and understands their struggles as well. So she learned compassion. 
Another lesson she learned was, of course, that God can do miracles. Some people have been healed from their sickness or their disease, and some people have recovered um, from a disability or have gotten strong and was able to walk again. So she did learn that, yes, God does heal, and he can um, show us miracles through healing. But she also learned that God doesn't always have to heal. And even if he doesn't heal, it doesn't mean he does not love us. It doesn't mean that our circumstance is so bad. And then also finally from that, she learned that through her weakness, she had to lean on God for his strength. So she learned to grow spiritually. And these are amazing lessons that we can learn, boys and girls, from special circumstances that don't seem so great or wonderful. And that God is still God. He has a plan and a purpose for everything. Now, Johnny's story is just amazing to me. I mean, even I was wondering, I'm like, Lord, this week, I'm just crying out to God, Lord, why this and and why that? But when I learned about Johnny, it humbled me and let me know, you know what? There's not much to complain about. Somebody may have a different problem than you have. Even if we have problems, someone has something different than us and we can learn to get through it by the power of Jesus. All right, so boys and girls, that was our lesson for today. We have learned that God not only gives us special gifts, but he gives us a special circumstance in which he can be glorified and we can grow stronger in him. Now, before you go, we must go through our trivia for today. We cannot forget what happened in the story. So I have five questions that I want you to see if you can remember from the story and answer. And if you don't, you can use the reference Bible verse to help you. All right, so let's start with question number one. Let's see if you remember it. Aeneas lived in Joppa, Lydda, or the country. Acts chapter 9, 32 through 33. Okay, if you said Lydda, you would be correct. Aeneas lived in the town of Lydda, and there many people came to believe after Peter healed him. Question two. He couldn't get up because he was paralyzed, too tired, or too old. Acts 9, 33. The answer is paralyzed yes he was paralyzed question three tabitha also known as dorcas made other people angry homemade meals or clothing acts 9 39 the answer is clothing she made other people clothing okay question number four she couldn't get up because she was exhausted or she died or was paralyzed? She died. She died. Correct. Okay. Our last question, question five. After Peter healed Aeneas and Dorcas, what was the result? The people were scared of them. The people became angry or the people believed in the Lord. Acts chapter nine, 32 and 45. Well, if you said that the people believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you would be correct. God used them for a special purpose. It was to turn them to him and to get them to believe that through Jesus Christ, we can be healed. He is God. We can be saved. Just amazing. God uses special circumstances for his glory. All right, boys and girls, you did a great job with answering the questions. Now we want to make sure that we review our memory verse before we go. It comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you received a spiritual gift. God has shown you his grace in giving you different gifts. And you are like servants who are responsible for using God's gifts. So be good servants and use your gifts to serve each other. Okay, so boys and girls, do not forget to put this memory verse inside the children's WhatsApp, okay? Once you've memorized it, send it to the children's WhatsApp and make sure that you get recognized for memorizing your verse. Do not forget to do your worksheets after this, okay? Because they're very important. They help reinforce what you've learned and the things you need to use and apply in your life, okay? So that's it for today, boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining me for this lesson. And I can't wait to see you the next time. So see you later. Bye-bye.